Hello, hello. Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you very much for being here. I appreciate it. Okay, today we are going to talk about a huge misconception that younger is better. And this is something that, you know, first of all, let's start here. I have the books, right? I wrote Life Without the Bank and Farming Without the Bank. In both of those books are examples of younger versus older. In both of those books. And so I don't know what happens to people if they miss that section, if they need to read that section again, but I hear people say it all the time. Well, I should be doing a policy on my kid because it's going to be better for that situation. Or, you know, for they'll just think that it's going to be better all in general. Go back and reread that section of the book. Because if you are 55 years old and you think you're old, for the love of Pete, You're 55. You have like probably another, you could live another 50 years. You could. People are living over 100 all the time. If it's 30 years, you got 30 years. I don't get why people think they're old at 55. It just, it it blows my mind a little bit. So, and, and clearly it makes me a little bit irritated. Because 55 is not old. Even 65 is not old. It's maybe old when you're 20. But seriously, if we are buying life insurance and we are trying to do the infinite banking concept, think about it. If we're going to have insurance on ourselves, that is going to be better. Yes, better in our 50s because we are going to leave a a discounted dollar of death benefit to our heirs. What that means is that if you are about 54, 55 years old, well, it's not even going to be, and well, it's going to be about 50 cents per dollar of death benefit, okay? So if you are 55, you and if you die at 85, you are going to pay 50 cents for every dollar of death benefit that goes to your heirs. So that is what I call a 50 cent dollar. What happens is you old people come in and say, Oh, Mary Jo, I'm too old. I'm 55. I want to do this on the kids. Okay, you can do that, but you're not leaving a discounted dollar. You are leaving them death benefit. Fantastic. But we're not leaving them the discounted dollar that they can then take and buy more death benefit. And so if you guys don't understand this, Uh, You can go to my Farming Without the Bank um, website, farmingwithoutthebank.com, and on the very first page, I have a generational wealth blog post. And yes, it's it's it doesn't have anything to do with farming. It just relates to a discounted dollar. That does not matter. The farm, but if it it doesn't matter if it's farming or business or what it is. I had a gentleman that is a a large, large, large business owner makes multi-millions of dollars in his business. And he wanted to do life insurance on the kids. No, because it's not better. Yes, we can do some, but ideally, if we want the Rockefeller effect and we want to make sure that we are creating a massive legacy we do one of two things. We buy life insurance on the oldest person so that we are creating generational wealth. Yes, if you are 70 and 80, that might be questionable. But ultimately, I want the younger or the the middle-aged 65 and younger, we're going to buy insurance on them first. Then we're going to go to the next generation and the next generation. If that is possible, that's what we're going to do. 
I am not sure why people think that it is better to start on the younger person. Not only do I have it in my book, but Nelson talks about the generational wealth in his book. And he says the grandparents should be buying it on the grandkids. And the only reason he ever said that is because typically mom and dad are not in a financial situation where they can buy it on their own kids, right? The older generation typically has a little more money so they can stick some money on the grandkids. Plus, instead of giving your grandkids toys and crap they don't need, why not put it into a life insurance policy? The downside, mom and dad have to be insured for us to do that. We can't just put money on grandkids. Now, I do see people too. They'll come in and they'll be like, well, Mary Jo, can I just put that money on my, I just, I want to start policies on my grandkids so they go to college. Okay, this is not going to replace the cost of college unless you are putting in a lot of money a year. If you are putting in $1,000 a year per kid at year 18, you can expect about 20 grand. Those policies are not going to be super, super fast growing. Again, Nelson always said, you put peanuts in, you get peanuts out, right? A lot of times if we're looking at, most people are looking at a structure of a policy where it's going to, so-called break even sooner. Okay, that's awesome if you need it to do that. Otherwise, these kids' policies start a little bit slower because we're going to capitalize the policy, right? It's like starting your own bank if you were going to go to the corner and put a bank up. You got to capitalize. It's like starting your business. You had to capitalize. And so everything is going to be a little slower at front. But down on the back end, it's all going to come back and it's all going to be fantastic. It's just a matter of do we need that money today and can we wait for it? So most grandparents are like, oh, this is so awesome. I want to start for my grandkids. There are rules to start with grandkids. The insurance companies have guidelines. Start on yourself and leave the grandkids some death benefit. Yes, still do the policy on the kids but it's not going to create the generational wealth that we think we're going to want. Or we maybe we're just not thinking about generational wealth. Maybe that's the problem. And so maybe this podcast is just going to talk about that. I have several other podcasts that talk about that. But at the end of the day, younger is not always better. But yet we think that because we're looking at cost of insurance. Yes, the cost of insurance is cheaper, but the cash value is going to be very similar. And we've passed on a discounted dollar. If we buy a policy on the kids and the kids are 30 years old, we may be paid 20 cents or 25 cents for every dollar of death benefit versus 50 cents for every dollar of death benefit. More cost effective? Absolutely. Who's going to die first? Statistically, The 50 cent guy is going to die first. So let's take that 50 cents and then let's buy more. When we have the dollar, let's buy more life insurance. Now that 50 cent dollar was not really a 50 cent dollar. And if you look at my generational wealth post on my website, you're going to see that we get down to 16 cents for every dollar of death benefit just by passing it on. And by the fourth generation, we're at $44 million or $46 million. It's a ton of money. And so somebody has to start that process. We don't need to start that process on the kids. We think it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense if we have a business and we have a family that we are trying to start creating some wealth in. If you don't want your kids to have any more than they need, then go ahead and buy it on the kid. If you're not trying to create the wealth that the Rockefellers created, that all the wealthy create, then just go ahead and do what you want to do. But if, if we own a business, if we, own, if we own a business with the kids and we want that to continue, we need to teach them how to do it And we need to be buying on ourselves. 
and teach them what you want them to do. Again, it does not pay if you buy a policy on yourself and you're not teaching the kids what to do with it. And if the kids don't think that, they, if the kids have no interest in it, then you might want to set up a trust that has instructions of what to do with it, okay? Because you don't, otherwise, what's the point of it all anyway? I mean, it's going to help you while you're living, but is if you're okay with it all far, falling apart when you pass away, that's fine too. I am not okay with that. And so I would have instructions of what needs to be done. That is where the family meetings come in and all that stuff. Um, and, you know, I'm over here as the preacher, but that doesn't mean that my family understands it all because some just don't want to. And then you have to make that decision. If some don't just want to, do you want to give them the money and they, they just don't care? And then it's all gone. That's a decision you get to make as the policy holder and the one starting the process. But kids are not always better. Okay, that's all I have to say today. If you have other concerns, comments, questions, let me know. If you um, have a topic, email me, Mary Jo at Without the Bank. Or you can, if you have a question, go to themjhotline.com and you can leave your question there. If you haven't got the books and read them, do that. Go to withoutthebank.com, grab my book, grab Nelson's book, and then set up your appointment. It's free. All right, guys, have a fantastic rest of your day.